Good evening, everyone. I'm Suzanne Taylor King, mental performance coach for entrepreneurs, and I'm super excited for tonight's coaches in conversation conversation. Um, what I'm going to have everybody do tonight, since we have some new faces and some old friends, I want everybody to get connected. That's uh, one of the goals of these conversations is to have more coaches in contact with each other and benefiting from all that you do. So contact information in the chat or your LinkedIn profile link would be awesome. And then I'm going to go around the room and we're going to do a one minute intro. Something like, hi, I'm Suzanne Taylor King, mental performance coach for entrepreneurs. I help entrepreneurs integrate the things they want to do and get rid of the things that are holding them back upstairs. And just something simple like that and the best client for you. So name what you do, what type of coach you are, and the best type of client for you. This is how we can get connected and share clients with each other as well. Hey, Charlie, thanks for joining us. Listen, everybody wants to hear me on mute. Isn't that wonderful? But good it, to that's see always you. how it good is, right? You. Good to see you, Suzanne. You too. You too. All right. Let's start with, I'm going to go with my upper left and we'll go around the room. Mike O'Neill, give us your one minute. Well, hello, everybody. That's the advantage of being sitting right next to you. I'm mm -hmm. Mike O'Neill. I'm speaking to you from Dalton, Georgia, and I'm really just now kind of putting the coach hat on. That is, I'm beginning to call myself a coach, but my background is HR. And so I I am positioning myself to help growing manufacturers solve their people problems. Awesome. Very good. All right. And on my right hand side, Catherine Chadwick. Did you Hello, say Bob? everybody. Oh, yep. Sorry. I'm Catherine Chadwick. I'm here in Manhattan. Um, I am a transformational life coach with a background in nursing, and I'm a practitioner of applied positive psychology. And what I really do is I help people unlearn and relearn because this is the whole process, right? And I love the word craftsmanship because when you're crafting something, when you get to a point where you're working on it, you actually have something that you can use. So it's practical tools and strategies. And I talk to people and teach them about their mind diet. Um, the name of my coaching business is The Art of Self-Craftsmanship. That includes the Sunshine Quotient, which is uh, one of my favorite things, which is a mindfulness technique that I teach all of my clients. And I work with professionals and creatives, people that really, really they really know that there's something more than they've been living. And uh, I'm always, looking for people that are eager for a new mind diet. So thanks so much. Oh, mind diet. I like that. <laughs> Good job, Catherine. <laughs> All right, Dr. Mark Rhodes. Almost forgot to unmute. <clears throat> yes, I help uh, healthcare professionals become hormone proficient and ultimately hormone experts so they can help their patients and improve their bottom line. So my ideal client is a, uh, is a healthcare pro that wants to learn the functional approach to uh, being a hormone specialist. Awesome. I already have somebody to introduce you to. I hope you all have your notepads. I hope you all have your notepads writing things down. I have somebody to introduce to Mark, one of my clients. Awesome, Mark. Thanks for being here. And one of our featured uh, guests tonight, Mr. Pablo Gonzalez. Hey, uh, I'm Pablo. I have see, I'm a, I guess you'd call it a content strategist that uh, believes that the best way that you get business is by highlighting the relationships that you have around you. And uh, we create these content strategies, be it for digital strategies, trade show strategies, in-person strategies. Um, that allow you to really showcase your core values in the community around you as a way to build that social validation that you can add into all parts of your client acquisition channels. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. I am pumped to be here, Suzanne. Thanks for the invite. All right, Coach Chris, what's up? 
Hey, Suzanne, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I just left Dalton, Georgia an hour ago. So, uh oh. <laughs> no, uh, I was working with a client up there, uh, had a training class that I did all day today. And so, Mike and I actually met up on Monday for dinner. But uh, Mike is a friend, he's part of a, uh, a group that I belong to um, that we have called the Red Chair Council. Hence the Red Chair. Oh, we'll nice. Talk some other time, but um, it's a rare appearance. I'm Coach Chris. I get to help small to medium business owners who are self-managing sales and shouldn't be. I work specifically with the home uh, services, so uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, roofing, that kind of stuff. So if you know somebody who is uh, looking for someone to help them grow their business and grow their sales specifically, I can help them out with that. That's what I do. If you text Coach Chris to 21,000, you can get my digital business card. Love it. Thanks, Chris. All right, Michael, and pronounce your last name for me so I don't get it wrong. Don't about me. <laughs> yeah. Last name is Pacheco. Um, oh, okay. Pacheco. Yeah, pretty easy. Uh, Suzanne, pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. Hello, everyone. Yeah, else. you too. Um, my name is Michael Pacheco. I am in Washougal, Washington, sunny Washougal, Washington. Oh, that's a mouthful. My, my, yeah, my wife and I, we just, we bought 30 acres and built a house out here in the Washington state cascades. We are completely off grid on solar power. So it's, it's a pretty cool spot. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So I'm a, a marketing coach and consultant. I've worked with gigantic companies like Johnson and Johnson and the golden globes. And I've worked with probably dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, businesses, small businesses that no one's ever heard of before. Um, right now, I run, uh, I'm also a managing partner at Boxer Media and Growth Marketing. Um, we work with coaches and consultants to help them grow their businesses. We have a couple podcasts where we do, uh, it's kind of an interview type podcast where we help, uh, we feature coaches, we do interviews and whatnot. Um, and my ideal client would be coaches and consultants looking to grow their business. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You've been on my list for a while, been watching what you do. So appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. And Kim, welcome. Oh, you're on mute, Kim. I hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's nice to be here. I was actually invited by Matchin, and I was saying to him that I'm missing synergies and I'm missing community. I'm, I'm a big team player, so I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Um, coming to you from Oliphant, Ontario. So I'm staring at Lake Huron. So it's an absolutely beautiful place. Uh, I am an international coach. So I'm a business development coach uh, for financial advisors. And I like to say the modern financial advisor. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I've been coaching for over 20 years. I have over 24,000 professional coaching hours behind me. Plus I was an ex-national athlete and an NCCP certified coach. So I kind of have the both personal side. Uh, so the, the wellness, the fitness, the everything. I love the mind diet, Catherine. I'm stealing that. Thank you very much. I will tag you every time I use that. That's fantastic. Um, but I was a, a high-end senior executive and I have been one of the casualties of COVID. So a year and a half ago, they came to me in a Zoom call and let our whole entire team go. Mm. And from that moment, I thought, do I go back into senior executive uh, or do I go do my own thing? And I think a lot with a lot of other people, I decided that the change that I needed and saw that needed to happen in the financial services industry, I couldn't do it from a boardroom table anymore. So it was time to go out on my own and um, been running for eight months now, very successful business. I've replaced my corporate income. Um, and I know that's very unusual to have that type of, you know, change and transformation that quickly. Um, but I've been planning this for a long time and I've been coaching for a long time. So it was just very interesting. Um, I talk a lot about, you know, know your scripts and master the situation. So that's really the foundation uh, of my coaching. Uh, my co coaching company is called the Approach Coaching Method. And that name and that word approach means a lot to me. Um, I'm a big believer in personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's how you truly move the dial. Mm -hmm. Everyone deserves a different mm -hmm. specific approach. And so that word really means a lot to me. Uh -huh. And when it's in the, in the financial services industry, um, it has all kind of been a, a, a one, one, you know, one, one trick pony, the, the onesie, and uh, that needs to change. I'm a big believer in the experience economy. That's what's happening right now. Everyone wants experience. It's the reason why the great resignation is happening. And then the biggest piece was 
that a lot of people were asking me to help bring more women into financial services industry. So it is probably one of the most archaic industry of bringing women in. Uh, only 15% of the industry in North America are females and um, did a lot of research. I, had, I interviewed 100 women in 90 days and I got their information and we had some great conversations. And from that, I'm a big believer that it's not a gender issue, it's a culture issue. So from that, I've built the approach and uh, the successful business and I'm having a lot of fun. And my ideal client actually is the person I help best, those that have gone on their journey and they're standing at the gate of their path. And I'm the coach waiting for them at the gate of their path. So that's who I best serve. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. And I'll thank Mason for inviting you. Thank you. Uh, Denise. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stiegel. I'm the CEO and curator here at livinghealthylist.com where our mission is to excite and engage, to educate, but most importantly, to empower women and a few smart men to make those difficult decisions in order to live that healthy, happy lifestyle that works for them so they can flourish. Um, my ideal client who I am looking for on Living Healthy List is the health and wellness expert who has let's expand that health, wellness, personal development, and somebody who likes to have a little bit of fun in business uh, and in life. I'm looking for that expert who is looking for this community and collaboration that we provide on Living Healthy List. And I'd encourage all of you to take a look at our website at livinghealthylist.com to figure out what the heck I'm talking about with this list thing. So that's who I am and essentially what I do uh, as the curator um, of Living Healthy List. And it's great to see all of you today. Yeah, great to have you, Denise. Uh, Jason. I'm just happy I didn't have to go after Kim. That, that was exceptional. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm Jason Integrity. I own a company called Integrity Go and I'm a sales strategist. Um, what I do is help you have a seamless market and a sales conversation that's fit to you. No need for you to wear 7,000 hats and you don't have to turn into the used car guy. You get to be yourself 100% of the time. Attract the people who uh, you want to help that, that share your same energy and core values and just have a great conversation. You should feel good 100% of the time and you should make a lot of money. <laughs> I do I love Jason. You're awesome. You're awesome. Thanks for being here. Uh, Raj, say hello to everyone. Hi, I'm Raj, and I am here from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, Catherine. Apparently, we're you know, neighbors close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I am a personal branding photographer. I work a lot with coaches and entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers to help them tell their story in a vulnerable, authentic way. I have a process that I call the identity lab because what I believe is a, a photo shoot is not just a way to get pretty pictures, but a way to explore your identity. And I help my clients visualize, embody, and communicate their story through my process. And that often entails a coaching component. So I often find my, myself coaching my clients through finding their story and expressing them and getting comfortable in their own bodies. My ideal client is somebody who has had a major life or career transformation, and now they are ready to tell their story. They are ready to let go of perfectionism and just be comfortable in their own skin and just show who they are to the world. My, my favorite clients often end up being people who have recently left the corporate world to start their own business or some kind of practice or uh, people who are in the corporate world, they're like successful executives who want to use their platform to do something bigger, to advocate for a bigger cause. Well, thanks for being here. I love your work and make sure you follow Raj. He's very talented. Thanks for Thank being you. here. Uh, Mr. Charlie. Hello, everybody. It's hard for me to call myself my a coach because my clients say I'm more than a coach. Uh, as it says on the screen, I'm a human archaeologist. I help professionals like you uncover their hidden superpowers. They've forgotten about them and lost touch with them. And then weave that into their authentic story so they can differentiate themselves 
and attract people that can advocate on their behalf. We can't do it ourselves. It takes a community. They have to build a community that uh, rallies around them and champions them. We all have the opportunity to shape people's perceptions of what our value is, but our facts only tell. It's our stories that sell. In networking, the best storyteller is more likely to get the kind of quality referrals and eventually achieve their goals and win. However, the stories that most people tell, just not, they're not selling. So I'd love to get together with some of you, get to know you a little bit, uh, see how we can uh, help each other succeed and get more meaning out of the work we've chosen to do. Thank you very much. I'm in Philadelphia, by the way, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> I've All right. Really. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan, <laughs> go ahead, Charlie. What were we going to say? It's all about positivity, Denise. The sun will come yeah. out someday. <laughs> yes. Dan, wow. say hello to everyone with your intro. Hello, everybody. I am blown away at the quality of everyone's presentation. And I'll do my best to live up to these expectations I have. So I'm Coach Dan. I, I am a six-time cancer survivor, one of the most unique stories on the planet, I believe, in terms of cancer surviving and navigating how to build a body. So coaching for me is um, what I do and what I'm passionate to do. It's how I live. And uh, the best thing I can say is that the clients that I want to attract into my life is players. I'm a coach, so I need players in the game of life. All right. This is the game mm -hmm. of life, but people have forgotten what the game that they're playing. So first we have to remind them. The second thing is, is I have a, a very big mission, which is the eradication of chronic degenerative diseases part of the human experience. 93% of all chronic degenerative diseases are lifestyle driven, how you live. And we live ignorantly and arrogantly. So we have to get to that point. And then we're programmed in to follow a belief that disease is inevitable and out of our control. So all diseases start in that belief. It's deeply generationally hardwired. So we have to work with that belief that disease is inevitable and out of our control. And therefore we carry out those ignorant and arrogant lifestyle factors that actually contribute to 93% of the problem. So I'm here to help people first in their health, metabolic rehabilitation, you got to get your metabolic systems up and running. And secondly, soul rehabilitation. Your soul has to be aligned with that. You are the love that you're supposed to bring to the world, not the one that's needy for someone to love you. Good job, Dan. Great, Dan. Great. Lauren, uh, we're doing Lauren and Mason. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so we're doing uh, one minute intros, uh, who you are what type of coach you are, and who you serve. Go ahead, Lauren, you can go next. Uh, well, I'm not really a coach. Um, I do coaching, but I don't really lead with that. Um, I'm more of a consultant. I don't know if that fits in here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. So the short story is I facilitate the process of Blue Ocean Strategy. Um, if you know what that is, you could tune out for the rest. Um, if you're not familiar with that book, it is a book that that uh, walks clients through a strategy to do two things. One is get rid of their competition by seeking out opportunities in whatever industry you're looking at, um, opportunities that everybody, customers and competitors are ignoring. Um, identify those and leverage them and do it in a way that improves profits at, by about 30%. Um, that's the short story of what I do. Um, this works well for really any organization. Um, right now in particular, uh, one of the reflexive responses that businesses have to the cost of business increasing is to improve, increase their prices. Um, this is a great alternative. So any company that is looking to increase their price, I'd like to give them an alternative and at the same time boost profits. Um, it also works very well for adrenaline junkies for whatever reason. Um, those ultra marathoners, the rock climbers, the, um, the whitewater rafters, um, so that's me and who I am and what I do. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. I was battling uh, tech support, so. <laughs> well, glad you made it. You made it in right under right under the wire. Mason. Hey, gang. Um, so I am Machen McDonald. In case you're wondering about the name Machen, it was my dad's best friend's last name. So I'm running around with two last names. Um, I'm a strategic business coach. I've been lucky enough to be guiding small business owners and uh, 
sales professionals over the last 20 years in helping them optimize their mindset to bring their A game to their hero or heroine's journey. Um, and basically, I just get to have really deep, meaningful conversations with kind and caring hearted business owners. Oh, I love him so much. Thanks for being here, Mason. <laughs> All right. You. And I am your host, Suzanne Taylor King. And like I said in the beginning, um, I'm a mental performance coach for entrepreneurs. But to take that a step further, I love practice owners. And I like anyone who calls their business a practice. And I help them turn pro. I help them do that by mixing a combination of personal and professional development strategies, productivity, and also helping with the self the life, the eating, the moving, the sleeping, and getting those high performance habits in order so your business can thrive. The reason I created Coach Conversations is because I was home during COVID with my husband and my son, and I wasn't having these conversations as much. And I wanted to create a space for coaches to meet each other. Some of my best collaborations have been with other coaches. Some of my best masterminds have been with other coaches and some of my greatest client success stories have been with other coaches and so creating this space for us i'd love to have you back we meet the third wednesday of every month this same zoom link feel free to save it and join us on the third wednesday of every month if you enjoy yourself tonight and i want to turn the floor over uh, to my friend Pablo Gonzalez. Um, I stalked this man on LinkedIn for literally six months. I'm not joking. I mean, he's handsome and he surfs and all, but I was really stalking his content. And let me explain why. Um, the fact that he surfs is just a bonus in my book, if you know anything about me. But the content, the content grabbed me, and I'm going to tell you why it grabbed me, and then I'm going to let him explain it um, and feel free to like take whatever I say Pablo and and use it if you want um, I'm working on taking it right now as we <laughs> so I noticed here's this guy he's got a podcast and he shares this amazing content but it's not his content he's interviewing other people about what they do and the way he does it is so value driven for the listener. And it, it was so, so many of the episodes were helpful to me. I started listening while I was walking, started listening while I was at the gym. And that's how I knew, all right, I just have to talk to this guy. I just have to find out like, who is this person that's sharing other people's content and wisdom and growing his own tribe. So Pablo, thank you for being here. You don't have to talk too long, but just tell us your philosophy and your kind of mission behind the content that you share. Sure, thanks Suzanne. And uh, thanks for letting everybody, I know I surf, because I think that that makes me look really cool. So I it's appreciate up. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, <laughs> I guess, uh, about how long, how long do you want me to talk for? Like I can, I can modulate 10, 15, 10, 10, 15. 15. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. I'd love to make this a conversation. Yeah. My overall philosophy is that it is much more powerful and much more sustainable to be a kingmaker than to try to be king. Mm. Uh, in a, in a non uh, gender loaded statement, I much rather be the stage than the star of the stage. Right. Um, and I realized this in my early thirties, I, you know, I, I, I grew up very gregarious, trying to be the coolest guy in the room and the funniest guy in the room. And I went funniest in high school. And, um, I, I say that a lot. And, uh, in my early thirties, I got really involved with nonprofits. I started this like young professionals group for Habitat for Humanity as I was starting my first business when I was 29 and, uh, by the time I was 31, I, I was now, you know, like we did this young professional of it. Then I got on the board of Habitat. Then I did this like leadership Miami program. Then I got on multiple boards and I was starting different professional groups with the value prop of the head of the young professionals group gets to be on the board. And um, 
the way that we recruit these young professionals to like be a part of this and be, build this like pipeline of like advocacy and fundraising and like talent into the board would be that I'd reach out to young people in Miami saying that Miami is like a flaky city and people that you meet are going to kind of tell you, yeah, bro, I want to hang out with you and then bail on you. And um, the people in this room care a little bit more about something else than just themselves, at least, at least a little bit, they pass that sniff test. And the way that I'd activate them was that we would host our meetings for planning our activities in the boardroom of one of the board members of the charity. And we'd show up, that board member of the charity would show up and give us like 20 minutes of this was my career and how I got to where I got, where I got, and do you have any questions? And then at that point, that person would be a part of my network because I was coordinating the event. And anybody that came with us got to build that relationship, you know, as, as they felt. And then 20 minutes later, we're like, all right, so this is the happy hour this month. This is the volunteer event next month, right? Like, it was just kind of like, that was the gift, this relationship to somebody that you could, that you could come close to. And then I could enlist you in the mission that we both care about. And a couple of things happened through that journey. One, I, I realized that instead of, by the time I got to like 31, 32, and I was in these rooms with board members and you realize real quickly that people that are on the boards of nonprofits are the most influential people in your town. So it's a great backdoor into that. Um, it started hitting me that at 31 years old, all I could talk to is other guys that wanted to bra out with me and talk sports. And, you know, I had to, I had to figure out another way to, to be parts of conversations. And, and that's when this idea of, you know, I guess the cliche is interested becomes interest, interesting, right? The, mm -hmm. the idea that, um, I'm much better off using my superpower of uh, understanding what's interesting and communicating it, uh, flip that from using it on myself to using it to the person in front of me, right? Like this idea that everyone you meet, you can learn something from. And if you get good at sharing that knowledge, now you're this connector and, and you're, you're the stage, right? Like this hype man, um, that is my natural state. And, uh, and through that journey, I, you know, at one point my company got acquired. I went in house uh, for this hospital developer as director of sustainability, thought I made it. Then they got acquired. So three years later, the ownership group that I really respected that I wanted to go work for was out. And uh, I was pigeonholed as like green guy in a company that really didn't give a crap. Um, so I was really like punching around to figure out how to become more valuable. And at a certain point, the CEO of the company got invited to speak on a panel about smart cities and he decided he didn't want to go at the last minute. So he sends me in his stead. I show up to this room, maybe about 50, 60 people. I get on the stage and I share it with the head of Latin America for Cisco systems and the head of the smart cities initiative for the world bank, like 33 year old Pablo, who was at a dead end in his career, feeling completely out of place. But, uh, you know, thanks to the nonprofit thing, I became a really good networker and good public speaker. So I do my thing, I come off the stage and there's like a line seven deep waiting to talk to me. And that's when it hit me of, you know, my brain went into what the hell is going on here. And it hit me that this idea that the stage is this ultimate validation uh, gifter, <laughs> right? People are, the brain sees, the brain justifies what it sees. You're in the audience, someone's on stage. It tells you that person's more important than me, or that person has some kind of elevated level of value to, to offer me. And then it really exaggerates it when you share the stage with people of a certain level, right? This guilty by association thing of if I'm on stage with the head of Latin America for Cisco systems, I must be in his league. Um, so at the time I was trying to become more valuable for my company. And I decided that there was this project happening in South Miami. That was this high rise in a low density, high income area, but it was on top of the Metro rail across from university of Miami. And uh, it was transit oriented development. It was incentivizing public transportation. So I reached out to the developer and I said, hey, listen, I'm the director of sustainability. I really care about what you're doing. Miami needs more public transportation. How about we have an event in front of the young professionals that I am the shepherd for to talk about how important this is. I'm gonna put you on stage with the politician on the board of one of my charities to talk about it. <laughs> he said, yes, <laughs> uh, cost me nothing. A month 
cost me nothing. And uh, a week later, we're back to wearing a $60 million project. And I'm off to the races with this idea that there's a better way to do business development. And it's about providing stages for people and leading with value and all this stuff. And for then I've iterated through to understand that, you know, now we have this, the, the, the most important stage is the screen that we carry around in our pocket every single day. Um, because anytime somebody sees you on a screen, it's the same as a stage or they read about you somewhere. It's the same as a stage, um, there's stages everywhere. So I developed this, this methodology that I've trademarked as the relationship flywheel, which essentially allows me to be the stage as much as I can. And I've, I've deployed this for, you know, my biggest success case was my first client so far. And, and they're, you know, they're a little two years in, but you know, first year we built out this $40 million client acquisition channel. Um, and right now going into like Q1 of year, you know, year two's matured. We were literally having these meetups in different parts of the country of people that are fans of the show that we created. That's essentially a webinar for the company. Um, and we're, let's like Palo Alto and Seattle and, and, and these places are meeting up. Um, and at the fundamental level is this idea that the greatest value that you can offer somebody is community, right? What we're doing right now, bringing people together to, to, to partake in share pains and stories and, and, and share advice. And um, if, you can, if you can build this community thing correctly, um, you don't have to choose to only be, spend time building community if you do it right. You can be achieving your short-term objectives on the way. Right. And what I mean by short term objectives was when I started this company of selling this idea of how we create a community in your clientele um, via content. uh, Nobody wanted to talk about like people would be like, yeah, I'd love a community, but it's not a Monday morning problem. People don't arrive Monday morning. Like, what's the first thing that I do to make a community? They think, how do I get money in the door? Right. How do I fix my marketing? How do I how do I get a meeting with this person that I've been freaking dying to close and now they're ghosting me? Right. So so it's about achieving those short term um, objectives. And what happened when this guy, Greg Cohen, who's this the uh, one of the co-founders of this hundred fifty million dollar company that we've been doing this for, he knew that the more time people spend with his company. Right. Because there's this like awesome 88 person core value is driven on a mission kind of company that wins best place to work awards. He knew that the more time people spent with his company, the more people wanted to buy from them. And he also knew that in order to do that, he had to create content in order to scale this feeling. And his first shot was kind of what everybody does, right? Like, all right, I'm just going to be like thinking about things and go live. And then when somebody does something in the office, I'm going to ask him to do it again. Cause that was funny and make mm-hmm. him feel douchey. Um, and, uh, and he really was just like kicking his teeth and doing it. So what I proposed was let's have a live internet talk show and um, let's drive this internet talk show into a Facebook group and let's be really deliberate about getting people to connect with each other. And the formula for the relationship flywheel is kind of, it's three pillars, right? It's value, connections, and content, right? And the, the talk show, the stage, whatever your stage is going to be, right? Like for me, this idea of an internet talk show makes the most sense because I believe that your greatest form of feedback is interaction with your market. And normally when people make content, it's audience in. You think about what's my audience going to want to listen to. I'm going to make this, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to wait for signals. If you are doing a live show, the signals happen much quicker and you are able to build relationships on the front end while creating the content that then will give you the long tail signals. So I'll explain that a little bit deeper once you understand the concepts, but it's, you know, the value piece is what is valuable to your clientele, right? Your product is one piece of a puzzle that they are solving for. What are the other corners of that puzzle and the side pieces of that puzzle, right? Like how can you, how can you make that happen for them? And once you figure that out, and we call that our content lanes, right? So like, Kim, you work with financial advisors. You probably, these financial advisors are worried about client acquisition. Uh, they're, they're worried about uh, um, compliance. They're worried about um, 
how to how to run their practice and recruit new talent underneath them and 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 grow that book if you can think of if you can think of that as like these different lanes that you can bring expertise to and then think from once you have that inventory of these of these topics that provide value your product being one of them of course take inventory of the people that you have around you that you can provide that value to them in the form of an introduction right and um, that means anybody that's in your clientele, anybody that's in your network, anybody that's in your company, anybody that's within a DM uh, on LinkedIn or, or whatever your social media channel du jour to reach out to people on um, and, and plan a calendar around this idea that you're going to have these conversations with people that are going to provide this value to the rest of the people that you're trying to serve. Um, in this live show format, right? Kind of not unsimilar to what we're doing right now, right? Like Suzanne is bringing me on um, to build a relationship with me as much as she's bringing me on to build a relationship with you as well. And, um, and, and based on the topics that she brings and the speakers that she brings and the value that I bring to you, you're more or less likely to show up, right? Like there's also the rest of the value in this room, which is significant. Um, but this is the beacon, right? Like, and then once you once you have that in place and you can create a calendar around that, you start executing this live show stuff with, and I'll just give you this tip of when you promote it, the value has to be really, really apparent, right? Like most name reckon, you won't, you don't know who Pablo Gonzalez is, right? But if Suzanne is saying, come to this session and the subject is how to create a relationship flywheel that builds a community to attract clients, you may or may not show up then at that point, right? If that's something that you're interested in, if that's valuable to you. Um, so really position the value up front when you're inviting it, when you're making this show, uh, position the name, don't call it about yourself. Don't call it about your industry. Call it about the intersection between who your client is and who you want them to become. Right. So like make it an aspirational piece. Um, you know, Jason, you're, you are, you're, you're selling this like idea of selling through integrity and it's, you know, you can call it the non-cheesy salespeople, right? Or like, or the, the, you know, the, the, the non-sleazy salesmen, right? Like people, people are going to self-identify with the fact that they're salespeople and they're going to likely want to be that. And your, your guests will take it as a compliment when you call your, your, your show that as opposed to the Jason integrity show, right? Like they're going to want to come on. Cause like, Oh yeah, that's me. Right. My show is called the B2B community builder show. Right. So like when I invite people on, they're like, Oh yeah, I'm a community builder. Cool. I want to be on. Right. Um, so that, that's little pieces about the value, the connections, once you're running the show um, and you're interviewing somebody, right. The idea is you're building a relationship one-to-one with somebody that's a strategic relationship that you want to grow closer to because you either want them in, you know, you want them in your funnel, right. Like in your, in your, uh, in your client acquisition uh, pipeline um, or they're an industry expert. That's going to give you some credibility, right. Guilty by association or um or a partner, you know, some kind of partnership, right? Like there, there, there's an end goal to the relationship and you're building that relationship one-to-one while you are the people that show up, you're building a relationship one to few. And no matter if it's like six people that show up 16 or 60, that same hour that you spent, that you were going to spend anyways, building a relationship with one person. Now you've like six exit, 16 exit or 60 exit, right? Because you feel this likeness of being in the zoom room with us. And I'm, I'm building a relationship with you right now. Like I am with Suzanne as well. And, uh, and then one to many when it goes into the content piece, right? But like during the conversation, there's four vectors that you want to, that you want to really be, um, that you really want to be conscious of host to audience, guest to audience, host to guest, and then audience to audience, right? So you're obviously interviewing this person. You're making them feel special. You're trying to incentivize the guest to speak as well, to the audience to speak to you, right? So you're speaking directly to them, right? That's why I'm deliberately talking to people like Kim and talking to people like Jason. You, when you hear your name, you feel like you're part of the stage as well. You're sharing that stage. Um, incentivize questions from the, from the guests. And when that happens, mention the full question, give the full scope and context of whatever you know about the person asking it so that when you are presenting a question, you're driving that vector of like guest to audience by making the question seem like a warm introduction. And that helps everybody, right? Because the more context you give the guest, 
the better answer that they can give, right? Makes it easier on them. And the more context you talk about the person asking it, the more you're sharing the stage with that person as well, right? And then whenever there's whenever there's something shared in the in the chat, like uh, like Mike and talking about the relationship fly, we love that. Thanks, Mike, and I appreciate that. Or or Suzanne writing value connections content, right? Like people doing that. And the more that you do that, the more that then your content lends itself to this very scalable repurposing stuff that you're sharing the stage um, as much as possible, right? So we've created this process of the, the first tip I'll give you is to download, if you're looking into repurposing content, the, the program Descript is the jam, right? Because like the process that you create to do that really quickly has a couple of steps so you can scale yourself out of it. One is something that takes a video and transcribes it so that you can now highlight the pieces that you want without having to fast forward and rewind and look for a second, whatever. You can control F a document looking for the subject that you're talking about, skim through it, highlight it. That then goes to editing. Your editor can cut that piece out. Then they put that into a document where it's organized as a batch board, where you have the file of the video, you have the space that you can write a headline for them, and then you have a space that you can write captions for. So once all the pieces are taken out, you can just go quickly and write captions. That's another step whoever's writing that, the headlines and the captions, and then you have the distribution phase, right? So I say those five steps because that's how you start. Right now, if you're a solo operation, you do that yourself, right? But like, as you get some budget, it's pretty cheap to get the distribution person to do it. You know, if you get a video editing person, they can also take a couple of these hats, but now you've created these different roles that you can scale yourself out of in order to take that conversation and turn it into a podcast, a YouTube, a YouTube shorts, uh, 10 different social media bits and uh, quote cards and a blog and then email and stuff like that, right? So you do that over and over. That's the relationship flywheel because the more value you're bringing to your guests by creating these great pieces, the more valuable guests you're going to get to then present to your audience, which then you're driving these great connections while you're doing it. That keeps growing as the valley grows, the content gets better, the value gets higher, the, the community gets better and, uh, and so on and so forth. When you are distributing the content itself, Right. Like I see a lot of people that are just putting out audiograms and whatnot. The kind of um, when you're distributing on social, you want to create this like thumb stopping experience. And that's all, you know, I've, I don't know if you ever heard of the framework popularized by Russell Brunson called hook story offer. But you got to you got to hook them in order to them get them to minute one second 12 of your video where the juice is. Right. So you got three hooks to throw in whatever social media, you know, feed format. And it, one is the headline on top of the content, right? Like call out the value of that one micro piece of content that you put on top of it. Then it's the first three seconds, take that punchline of the video, put it at the front part of the video, and then you start the story, right? And then the first line of the copy, which is, you know, to write your first line of copy, you write, you think, I never thought I'd say this, but, and then whatever comes out next, based on what you learned from this, from this thing, that's your first line of copy. And then you explain it, right? So if those things all work in concert, you got a higher chance of somebody stopping on your content. And then at the end of the day, if you're really doing this and you're very purposeful about sharing the stage, now the stuff that you're writing on LinkedIn or, or Facebook or whatever, and you're tagging these folks, now you're very genuinely tagging them. And it's really about them sharing some kind of value that you have facilitated. So they're stoked to share that stuff, right? Like most people will put a piece on LinkedIn and then tag 10 people. The more purposeful you are about tagging the people that are actually a part of it and actually gain from being tagged because you either reference that they asked a great question, right? So this like Q&A stuff is powerful or you're referencing the guest that's explaining it to them or you're talking about something you learned from someone and this is who I learned it and I tagged them from it, right? Like that gets much higher engagement and really is a much more sustainable way to build relationships, right? Like I, I'm, I'm personally tired of being part of a seven people being tagged on something. And it's just like, I, I really, that didn't happen. All you did was ping me in LinkedIn, like, thanks for nothing. Right. Um, so it's just a very organic and very genuine way to do it. And this really works back to what Jason was talking about, this idea of selling by core values. When you are, when you are, when you have a clear mission, right? And you really know what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and you can define these like core values of these like bumper lanes that are the things that you'd like to stay in. And that leads to you attracting people that believe in this mission and want to enroll and agree with the way that we're going to get there. You know, your relationships start becoming very aligned 
And once you're there, which I believe that people in this room are like that, then what you really want to do is shine a light on those relationships, right? Like this is no, it's a game of social validation. This is no different than, you know, if, if all of y'all have done a project with Suzanne and you're really impressed by her, it's no different than that recommendation, right? Like, oh man, yeah, no, Suzanne's awesome. She's uh, really helped me out, you know, getting my mindset right. And this like self-limiting belief that I have, and I'm sure she's great for you. It's very different than like, hey, meet my buddy over here. Right. Um, and I learned that doing the nonprofit stuff, right. If you're working on something together with people um, and you're, and you're on the same page looking for something, it's a much higher referral than, than uh, somebody that you just know because you, because you've met them or they're a friend of your family or whatever. Right. So doing this process just allows for you to shine a light on the relationships that you have and the people that you share values with and get into their networks. Cause they see, Oh, my friend's on TV and who's this other person. Um, and, and it's, it's just one giant referral mechanism that unites people as well in a, in a common cause. And there's just no, there's no more valuable, no more powerful ambassador of that right now, you know, you're going into year three of this, not Travis investor show community. We're literally purchasing tickets for FinCon, which is like the big content creator, um, for financial education, uh, conference. And we're taking like anybody from this not travel investor community that wants to come, we're going to buy their ticket, right? Because our plan is not just, is not just us to be in that room. It's just to us to be in that room with a whole bunch of people are like, oh yeah, we're with this. And then on top of that, Greg, this guy that I, I started this podcast with, we both get reached out to, to do a lot of podcasts and we want to, we won't want to be on those stages, but <laughs> the, what we're going to start doing is being like, Hey, we'd love to, but why don't you talk to Lee? Why don't you talk to Jen? Right? Like we're literally putting community members on the stage. Cause when people hear from somebody else about how great you are, mm. uh, it's you're the, they're just much more likely to believe. It. I feel like I talked for too long. I just, I just get, I, I get yeah, It's so awesome. Um, are, are you open to taking in any questions? If anybody has anything? Wait. Yeah. All right. Uh, who's got a question? Just unmute and, uh, or raise your hand if you want to do it formal. Michael. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for Descript. Descript is amazing. If you guys haven't okay. played with that, when you're making content, check out Descript. Pablo, you're spot on there. It's just, it's such a fantastic, uh, useful piece of software. And awesome. just in general, man, I love, I love what you're saying. I think in my experience from what I've seen, it's so important to do this stuff that doesn't scale when you're running a small business. It's so important, you know, yeah. So good stuff. Uh, I love boxers, dude. I feel like me and you should be best friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I agree, right? So so thanks for tagging the script again. The reason why I mentioned the script is because I used to, when we first started this process, I was using like one tool to, to transcribe. Then I was sending it to a video editor to edit. Then it was coming back and I was writing this. In the script, you do it all inside the same software. Um, so it's just like you can edit video the way that you edit a Word document. It's, it's super, super powerful. Oh my gosh, a software that I've never heard of. This is blowing my mind over here. Love it. Anybody else have any questions for Pablo? Right. Go ahead, Charlie. Pablo, give us a, a, a sense of the, your journey from a time point of view, from the time when you realized that you had to do things differently to today. What's that journey been like? Man, Charlie, thank you, man. Thanks for that question. And by the way, speaking of hooks, I love your title, the human archaeologist, right? Like that's like, that definitely makes you like, huh? And then you're, you tap in, right? So the hook point thank is you. a very powerful thing. Thank you. Uh, man, I was, I was super pumped to be director of sustainability and feel like I made it and have health insurance after two years of entrepreneurship. And, and then, and then, and then I was really pumped to just kind of be working 15 hours a week and getting paid hundred grand a year. Uh, and, and kind of the first aha moment was my wife started dealing with some trauma from her childhood and she was going through a hard time doing it. And there was a, there was a moment where she, this is probably about 2015. There was a moment where she was just like, I felt like she was judging me really harshly because she was trying so hard on something and I wasn't trying so hard and I thought it was unfair. And now I realize that, you know, when I was like, babe, you know, I'm good. Like, you don't have to judge me that way. I realized that I'm the asshole. Right. Like, um, so at that moment, at, at that moment, it was a moment where I'm like, okay, wait a minute, I'm not going to keep this relationship if I'm just cruising through life and she's working really hard to be her best self that unlocked something in me. The next big moment that unlocked something in me was my brother's funeral. Um, 
after two years of pancreatic cancer, this was, it's, it's been eight, it's been eight years now. Um, 1200 people showed up to the, to the mass. And, and I real that's the moment where I realized that community was the biggest thing, right? Like the mm. biggest value, right? Like these, these 1200 people, whatever I think about the Catholic church, these 1200 people made these last two years so much more bearable. And they're making this moment really, you know, like carrying us through this moment. There's no ever leave this community and oh wait a minute this solves for churn and oh if this is solving for churn which is a business case then organized religion has a business model around community and oh wait a minute i'm seeing you the rest of the world because if you buy a harley davidson two years later you can't get on the motorcycle because you're gonna lose your friends right so like at, the, at that point that really really motivated me and i just didn't so i pulled off that event and like two years later i didn't shut up about this thing i got serendipitously the opportunity to be a, a VP of business development at the startup for e-commerce in uh, mid 2017, quit my job at the end of that, joined this startup beginning of 2018, jumped into a dumpster fire, proved this model of community creation for business development. Instead of doing live events, hosting these like Zoom events in like 2018, which solved for all these problems. And at the end of 2018, decided I didn't really want to build something with this guy that I, that I partnered with. So kind of just walked away from my equity and kind of said, you're welcome. And 2019 was kind of when the journey really got real, man. I, um, I took a 90 day purposeful pause to figure out where I want to be in 10 years in reverse engineer. And during that pause, cause I fall in love with everybody. Right. So like, I knew that I would just take the next opportunity. Um, but that was my wife's idea again. And um, during that pause, I booked these like four conferences because even though I was going to be super anxious, not taking conscious directional action, I wanted to be like in my zone and walking into a room full of people I don't know is my freaking favorite thing in the world. So I wanted to do that and get some feedback and build some connections. Those 90 days gave me all this feedback that allowed me to realize that I want to prove community creation as a viable business model. And I want to be known for that. Took me to like July to get my first client who was this guy, Brendan Kane, that had this amazing book that he had just released of how he built a million followers in 30 days. Um, and he was like the digital consultant of the stars. So he was getting like these really high ticket clients. He had this best selling book and he was speaking all over the world, but it was all like big contracts and he wanted to build a recurring revenue model. So we put this community play on the back end of this like free book plus shipping model. And as I'm like executing that for him, I'm getting a master's in world-class content strategy of this dude that built a million followers in 30 days. And that's when I realized it's a content play. And that's when I met Greg Cohen from JWB and January, 2020 was when he signed this contract, which was like a $6,500 a month contract. It took my practice to like 12 grand a month at the time. And um, everything that we've executed now as a B2B play for JWB since 2020 is the story that I've told, but it's been one kick in the teeth after the other, right? Like the first, when I first got this contract, I essentially just like, um, to your point, Michael, I essentially just like decided that I was going to pour myself into proving this thing and do everything that doesn't scale so I can figure out what scales around it. And that took me until like quarter three of 2020, I realized it was all working. And thankfully, because I put out a ton of content, this guy that I had met at PodFest the March before the world shut down, uh, reached out to me and um, had me on his podcast. And then at the end of the podcast said, I want to be your partner and scale this thing. And he is, you know, kind of like this like dream partner, quintessential Israeli entrepreneur that's been in a bunch of startups. So we started trying to build scale around it. By beginning of 2021, we hired like our, the biggest, you know, change in our, in our company, which is hiring Gina, our COO who's really been basically our chief heart officer and has been able to build this very tangible remote work culture and a really, really great team of remote workers throughout 2021. And, uh, you know, we went through ups and downs of selling this product in 2021 and onboarding people because it's a, it's a hundred thousand dollar a year product. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, you know, it's a, it's a long sales cycle until, you know, we just kind of, we're really hitting our strides right now in 2022 in that we have this product really well set. We have this amazing client story. And now we've developed, because we have the team, we've developed multiple products around the same concepts. Like right now, I'm in this healthcare conference, healthcare tech conference in Orlando. And what we're doing for this uh, healthcare tech company is that they had a trade show booth. And, you know, instead of just 
putting themselves in a fishbowl in this trade show booth. Um, we set up a podcast recording studio and um, in their booth. And now their salespeople are walking around this conference of like 20,000 people. And when they get in a good conversation, they're like, oh, that's really interesting. You should come back and talk to our CEO to be on the thought leaders of HIMSS 2022. And so they bring this person back. They show up to like a set that has lights, camera, and all the action and mics and whatever. They get this like intimate experience. I'm taking a picture of them that I share with them um, that they take with them of like being on TV my team overnight turns that 12 minute video into one and a half minute sizzle reel. The salesperson follows up the next morning with this sizzle reel of theirs. So now they're winning the conference in LinkedIn. And two weeks later, they're following up with like, Hey, we're going to release your podcast. We want to get to know you to write a good description. Let's have a follow-up meeting. And now you have a completely differentiated follow-up technique, right? So we've, we've taken this idea of relationship out content as opposed to audience in content. And we've applied it across multiple applications and that's really what that's really where the cash flow is coming from while we're building the recurring revenue clients that we're building this thing out for thank you for answering that uh, dale carnegie was right people like to talk about themselves <laughs> it, i just proved that right yeah, yeah. Did. <laughs> yeah. but i i want to say one thing that i have learned that everything you've just talked about the relationship flywheel the value, the community, all, all of it. I love it so much. And what I learned from following you and seeing what you're doing is that you don't have to create 40 hours worth of content every week. You're, you are really creating one hour of content a week, maybe two from what I've seen. And it's the pieces of it and the way you structure it, that seems like you're always on social media, but you're not. And it's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Listen, I, I, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I just straight up wanted to turn into Gary Vee at one point and was trying to reverse engineer it, right? Um, I mm -hmm. think the, I, I, I took the whole thing from him, right? Like I've seen Gary speak multiple times and I know that it's a Q&A and I know that if I ask a good question, I might make it onto his Instagram. Yep. And then I'm Gary V famous. So I haven't done that, but I've made it into his stories and I've made it into his podcast multiple times because I get up and ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's uh, it's not hard. If you can if you can share the stage and you can repurpose content, you you get that effect that you're talking about, Suzanne. Yeah. Love and then it. if you do it in, in service, then you can create a community. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments? thought about coach conversations uh i do host a coffee chat uh every friday in my facebook group uh catherine's actually joining me very soon for one of those and catherine and i are very similar coaches um so this is this is something that i believe in is that people who do very similar things can have amazing conversations and really get the audience intrigued and involved in those conversations. So don't be afraid of that. Suzanne, there's only one Suzanne. Yes. And, and people buy people. They don't buy your company. They buy exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the truths of being a coach. Absolutely. I'll well, just say, can I, I really just like check? About Ooh, I competed. Oh, who was that? It was me, but there was somebody before me. Oh, go ahead, Daniel. I'll follow you. Okay, Catherine, that's gracious of you. So I just want to let everyone here know that I am the rookie, and a lot of the language that I was listening to was kind of foreign to me. So I am a startup in many ways, but uh, the business part is the hardest part for me. Right now, it's the challenge. So the language and stuff like that, I'm still learning and wanted to just share that. This is how you do it. Hang out with people who are doing it. There's a song about that, right? This yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, I just wanted song. to thank you for bringing all of us together. And Pablo. Is oh, just, you're so uh, welcome. I had no idea what to, what I was walking into because it was so late. But boy, I am so, and I almost didn't come because I'm so tired. But 
I'm so glad I did. This was, um, whoever said this was gold right here, they're absolutely right. Um, and I took copious notes. The resources that you shared were so generous. Thank you very much. Um, and I have a feeling whether you want it or not, I may be reaching out to you for more questions. I will register for your workshop. So thank you. In love it. Listen, I, I like to tell people that my, I've got two KPIs in life. My, mm-hmm. my like, Physical KPI is how many times a week I'm surfing. My spiritual KPI is how many requests I get from somebody asking me a question about something that they care about. <laughs> right. So, yeah. um, and, and this was an honor. I actually got to, I got to go hop on a, I'm, I'm at this conference with a client and we have a, a next event. So I got awesome. to, but thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Me on LinkedIn. Being here. Anyway, please, 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 please. Thanks, Pablo. This is really Pablo, great. Thank you so much. Great thank you. To, Take care. Great to meet Bye-bye. you here. You yeah. Too. yeah. Okay, I'm blown away. All right. Well, that's awesome. I knew you would be, and that's why he was invited. Um, so that's the conversations that we're going to have every month here. Somebody that I stalk and admire for you, and bring them to you. Um, the people that I'm learning from. I've been in this online space for over 12 years. I've grown a coaching practice in three different niches health and wellness. Um, I had a marketing agency for a year, hated it, sold it. And I've met a lot of people along the way. And from Pablo, uh, from watching him and learning from some of the people he's interviewed, I really realized that these connections that I have all need to meet each other. And that's part of coach conversations was that there's going to be people in this room every month, some same some new faces, but connect with each other, save the chat, go over to those three little buttons over there and save the chat. If you haven't put your contact information in the chat, please do so and reach out to each other and connect with each other's businesses, support each other's content. Um, Denise is doing an amazing interview series, um, free coaching Fridays, Uh, her team of coaches, offers free coaching. I host a Friday coffee chat with another entrepreneur. So if any of you would like to be featured on that, I have 8,000 followers on LinkedIn and over 10,000 on Facebook. That gets you exposure to those people. And all I ask is that you come have fun and share it with your people. Um, who else? Uh, Charlie, uh, you you do some interviews. Dr. Mark, did you have a question? Oh, more a comment. <clears throat> sure. Um, I get invited to quite a few events, and you and I do not know each other. No, we I don't. T- uh, now we do a little bit. Um, a bit. Two things. Like I say, I, I see these event invitations, but the two words, coach conversations, caught my eye, so I clicked the link. And number two, you and I have over 700 mutual connections. So I knew there wow. would be, isn't that, that number is amazing. And it just told me that it's going to be worth coming. And it was, it was great. Well, I'm so happy to have connected with you. And there's, there's somebody I want to introduce you to. And then you should talk to Denise, who's here in the room about her living healthy list. Um, and yeah, I will, we'll talk and we'll get connected. Uh, Denise, are you on LinkedIn? I am. Yes. Uh, you can find me at just my last name, Denise Steele, S T E G A L L. And you put your link in the chat. I'll say it in there. Mm -hmm. Please do. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we're a little after eight o'clock. I'm going to hit stop record. And if